Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my algebra video tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solve equations with two variables, and I'm also going to show you how to plot equations on the coordinate plane. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so solving equations with two variables is handled in much the same way as whenever you solved for one variable. Again, we simply simplify both sides, add and subtract like terms, multiply and divide unlike terms, and get a single variable alone on one side of our equation. And I'm going to teach just like previously by just solving a whole bunch of problems. So we have negative 6x plus 3y is equal to 18. Well, first what I want to do is separate these two variables. So I'm going to change this into 3 y is going to be equal to 18 plus 6x because we added 6 to both sides. And then quite simply, I will just divide both terms on the right side of the equal sign by 3. And this becomes y is equal to 18 divided by 3 is 6 and 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2x. All right, and that's how that's solved. Let's do the next one. Very, very simple. All we need to do is go and get rid of the 4x on the left side. So this becomes 2y is equal to negative 4x. And then divide by 2 to get y is equal to negative 2x. And let's do another one. Let's do one that's kind of a real world situation. Let's say that we have the formula for calculating Fahrenheit and we want to switch it to calculate in Celsius. That's a little bit more real worldly. Well, first off, what we're going to do is subtract the 32 from both sides. So this is going to become F in minus 32 is going to be equal to 9 over 5c. I am then going to multiply by 5 over 9 on both sides of our equations. So we will have 5 over 9. Put this in parentheses and this becomes f minus 32 is equal to, and again, 5 over 9 multiplied times 9, 5, c. And of course, that is going to cancel out, which leaves us with the final answer that Celsius is going to be calculated by going and getting 5 ninths multiplied times whatever the value of Fahrenheit is, minus 32. All right, so real world way of using math. Always a good thing to try. And let's go and do another formula here. Let's say... What I want to do here is just handle this as a negative 1 for the distributive property. So this is going to end up being x minus y minus 4 is going to be equal to 2x plus 3y minus 6. Let's go and subtract out the 2x. So this is going to become x minus 2x minus y minus 4 is going to be equal to 3y minus 6. Simplify the x terms that we have here, which is going to leave us with negative x minus y minus 4, which is going to be equal to 3y minus 6. Again, we will have x or minus x and we want to get rid of the negative y and the negative 4 from this is going to be equal to, because I want to solve for x in this situation. So negative x is going to be equal to 3y plus y minus 6 minus 4. Can I fit in some more here? Yes, that's going to become negative x, which is equal to 4y minus 2. And then if I divide by a negative 1, that's going to give me a final answer of x is going to be equal to negative 4y plus 2. All right, and of course that is this. 
All right, so good stuff. Let's go and solve some more. Okay, for this guy, what are we gonna do? Well, I think I am going to subtract the three Y from both sides to move it over to the left side. So that means this is going to become X minus Y minus three Y minus four is equal to two X minus six. Then we will combine these Y terms that we have here. So this becomes X minus four Y minus four is equal to two X minus six. We can then get rid of the X term on the left side by subtracting it. That leaves us with negative four Y minus four. Oh, why don't we just skip a term here? Let's subtract the negative X and let's also add four to both sides. I think you guys can handle that. So this is negative four is equal to two X in this situation, two X in this situation, minus X, minus six, plus four. We can then simplify the values of X as well as the individual whole numbers and we get negative four Y is going to be equal to x minus two. We can divide by negative four for every single value. Actually, I'll show it to you just so you can see. So this is gonna be negative four and negative four and negative four. And whenever we solve for y, that gives us a final answer of y is going to be equal to negative one fourth x plus one half, and there you are. And let's solve one more. Okay, so we have xy plus two is equal to negative seven y x plus one. So I'm just gonna leave the left side the same here for now. Let's go xy, because it's very important to know how to get these x's and y's separated from each other. So we will just multiply through, and we will get negative seven xy minus seven y. And then I can go and move, or I can add seven xy to both sides. So we'll have xy plus seven xy. Let's go and also subtract the negative two from this. So that leaves a negative seven y minus two. And if we combine these terms, we get eight xy is equal to negative seven y minus two. Then we can go and divide all the terms by eight over y. And this is going to isolate x to get them apart. So we will divide by eight y, divide this by eight y, divide this by eight y. And whenever we do that, that is going to cancel out some terms for us. So we are going to be able to cancel out the eights. We're gonna be able to cancel out the y's and there's another y and another y. And that is it for now. And whenever we cancel out all those values, that ends up giving us x is going to be equal to negative seven over eight minus one fourth y. And you can leave those in any order. Of course, you could also have it as X is equal to negative one fourth Y minus seven eighths if you prefer that format. Okay, so there you go. That is solving equations with two variables. And now I wanna talk about plotting equations. Okay, so previously we graphed on the number line. And this time what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna move into two dimensions and graph on the coordinate plane, which is what you see here, two examples of. And we're gonna use coordinate planes whenever we are working with two variables. And a coordinate plane is just two perpendicular lines. The horizontal line, which goes from left to right, is called the x-axis. And the vertical line, which goes up and down, is called the y-axis. And the point in the middle is called the origin, and it would be at zero, zero, because X is zero and Y is zero. And we are going to plot points 
by saying, let's say for example, that we have a point at the x2 and the y3. What does that mean? Well, this is the x part here and this is the y part there. So we go over two spaces for the x, which would be right here. And then let's go and use a different point. Well, actually, let's use the blue just to show. So that's where the x is. This is where the y is. And the point that we are going to plot is right where those two meet. All right, so that is how we plot our points. And the upper right quadrant is going to be called quadrant one. So this is this guy, and they're written in Roman numerals. And any points that lie in that quadrant are both going to be positive, so positive x and y. Quadrant two points are going to have a negative x value and a positive y. Quadrant three are going to have both a negative x and negative y. And quadrant four are going to have a positive x and a negative y. So let's go solve some problems. So we're going to start off here pretty simple. In this equation, this simplifies quite easily. If we just go and subtract y, we get a final value of y is equal to x. And if we go and figure out what all these points are by plugging in values of x, well, this is a common way to do that. We can say y and x like this. So now if we go and plug in a zero in x on our formula, that means we get a zero for y. We put a one in, we get a one for y. A two in, we get a two for y, and so forth and so on. So then all we need to do, let's go and erase that. I think you can figure that out on your own. Then all we need to do is just go find all the values for x and that know that they will be equal for y. So we can put a point here, we can put a point here, we can put a point here, and we can continue to put points everywhere we go. And what we're simply going to do is come in and draw a line that is going to represent that equation. And there it is right there. All right, let's go do something a little bit more complicated. So we have x minus y plus one is equal to zero. Well, all we have to do is solve for y in this situation, which I think you're probably pretty good at this. So we'll say y is gonna be equal to x minus one. Okay, so we got that figured out. And now all we have to do is plot them out. So I'm gonna say x and y go and figure out what all of these are gonna be equal to. Well, we know that if x is equal to zero, we say zero minus one, so that means that y is equal to negative one. If x is equal to one, well, x minus one is gonna give us a y value of zero. If x is equal to two, well, that's gonna give us a y value of one. And we can go and plot these points. So we can say when x is zero, y is negative one. So put a point right there. Whenever x is equal to one, y is zero. So we'll put a point right here. And then whenever x is two, y is equal to one. So we'll put a point right there. Then we can come in and we can draw a line and that represents our equation once again. So that is it, and in the next video, I'm gonna cover rates of change and drawing more on the coordinate plane. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.